Has anything changed after becoming a married couple? What is something that you would change about your wedding? What is something you wish people knew about your partner? Were you both on board with having children at first? How does living in such a confined space affect your relationship? Living in community, do you or would you consider an open marriage? Hey, welcome back to our channel. We are now in the UK. We're visiting my parents. We're gonna be here for a little while, have some adventures in the van. But also, we just celebrated our seven year anniversary the other day, our dating mm -hmm. anniversary. And it's been just over three months since we got married. So we thought we would do a Q&A, kind of more focusing on our relationship. We posted on both of our Instagrams and got so many good questions. So yeah, we just thought we'd kind of give our input of what it's like dating for seven years and I guess life after marriage. The reason we originally started this channel before we started road tripping everywhere in different vehicles and stuff. It was actually just to share more of our relationship. Mm -hmm. And the, if you go all the way back, if you haven't, and look at some of our first videos, it's more of a kind of like navigating our relationship, the ups and downs, just sharing more vulnerably about being a couple and navigating life together. So. Um, I think it'd be nice to sprinkle a few more of those kind of videos. And speaking of that, a lot of the questions were about how we met and all that, and we have a two-part video series where we told the whole story, everything, even the not-so-good stuff, so <laughs> we'll link those down below. Wow, so many good questions. Okay, I've got one. Has anything changed after becoming a married couple? Mm. We've actually had a lot of our friends ask us this too, like especially because we've been together so long, really did something change after getting married. Two of our other friends, Sage and Sia, put it quite well that they didn't feel massive shifts, but the shift was how other people perceive you. Mm -hmm. So like when we're, I don't know, when I'm like talking to people about my wife, I feel like there's that holds more weight. And yeah. I just feel like people take us more seriously. Mm -hmm. Or I don't know, I just feel like, yeah. Even like yesterday we ran into one of Louis's parents' friends here, because we're mm. in the town you grew up in, and just introducing me as your wife, the person's like, oh wow, like really yeah, great to meet like, there's some there's Seems a... more exciting for him than... Yeah, when you've committed to someone for your life together, it's just a deeper promise, mm. I guess. The shift for me really happened when we got engaged, and it's because we got engaged and bought land, <laughs> basically at the same time, so it really felt like our lives were becoming one, and mm. literally our, basically our finances became one, because we split the money for the land and everything. So to me, that was a huge shift. Getting married, I haven't felt that big of a shift, but getting engaged, I felt a huge shift. It just happened that a lot of things as we were getting married, like moving to Costa Rica, mm -hmm. planning our future, talking about starting to try for kids. So I think all of that feels like a big deal, but I also feel like you could do all that without Oh, yeah. That being like marriage, but I just think it just all coincides for us. So it does feel like a shift right now, like mm -hmm. it's a new season in our relationship. And obviously, you don't need to get married to have that kind of promise and to feel that. So for me, it was like really when we got engaged, was the moment we both were like, okay, this is it. We're really in for life. So that was the shift that really happened. And we have a lot of friends who didn't get married and have, have had the same kind of, you know, commitment to each other. So, yeah. Someone asked why the long wait on getting married, respectfully. Uh, for me, I had seen a few failed marriages in my friendship groups and honestly, it kind of put a sour taste in my mouth and I just thought like, what's the point? Um, it wasn't I was like being super negative about it, but I was like, you know, we, I felt committed. I feel like I'm, I'm either in or out with things. I'm like, I'm like all in. And I just had felt that about my relationship with Rice. So I was like, I don't really, hadn't really, felt urgent to get married but i think the thing that had kind of set it all in motion was like okay buying somewhere together wanting to have kids it kind of made sense to me mm. and by the way we haven't actually like legally done any paperwork or anything yet for our wedding so that that's not the main reason for us we just really wanted to commit to each other in front of everyone we love i think mm. that is like the true deep commitment is promising in front of everyone so again if there's an issue or something later down the line and we call a friend for advice like if they were there they heard our vows and saw us commit to each other i would hope that our whole community would like really hold us in that mm. commitment um yeah. so that was what was important to us personally how do you choose what to cut from your vlog if anything <laughs> okay this is interesting because we actually kind of take turns editing the videos so like when louis editing stuff we always have to, the other person like watches the video before it goes live, but it's just funny sometimes things that I would 100% have just naturally cut out, Louis will leave in and I'll be like, why would you leave that in? I'm really bad at being observant about things that I shouldn't leave in videos, just like a really unflattering angles of people and you know, and I think, <laughs> 
again, not getting too deep, but I think I'm like people are gonna criticize how I look less and I have noticed like women and girls are criticized so much more online. Yeah, I feel like I'm really bad at recognizing. Even when I'm taking photos with you, like she might have like hair like right <laughs> across the center of her face and I'll just be like, yeah, it looks great. And you're yeah. like, literally, <laughs> these are terrible. <laughs> And, okay, we film our vlogs on a wide lens. And if you're not into photography or anything, something that you might not know is a lot of those wide lenses, if you're right in the middle of the frame, it kind of like... This isn't even the widest, but no, if I go to wide. the edge, have I, have I got a fat face here? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Basically, and this is like not even the wide lens. So the actual wide lens, the more sideways you go, the more stretched out your face goes. Cause that's, it's like making it wide, right? Yeah. And a lot of the time, Louis is holding the camera, we're a foot apart, so we're walking or something, and I'm like in the bottom corner of the lens, and we, we joke about it that it makes me look like a potato. Yeah, and she'll just be <laughs> see herself and be like, no, no. Like, I'm a potato, we can't do that. <laughs> and, and there's definitely been cliffs where I'm, where honestly, I'm like, we just cannot leave that in. My yeah. face looks she'll like, just zoom, just zoom into you. Yeah. Don't have me as a potato in the corner. <laughs> And in our, one of our last videos of us sleeping in the car, there's one scene that Louie turns the thing and I'm a potato and I'm like, am I a potato? <laughs> That's all right, isn't it? Oh, I, am I a potato? <laughs> Normally, I would cut something like that out, but I was laughing so hard watching so that good. back. I was like, okay, we're gonna, even though I look stupid, we're leaving it in. That is like, <laughs> that is definitely like a little window into what yeah. normally doesn't make the cut. Usually so. there's like 15 of those in yeah. every video. Yeah. Especially when Louis's editing, then he just forgets and it's all in there and then I have to go through and edit all the potatoes out basically. How are all the household tasks divided between the two of you? Any issues ever? This is a really interesting topic. We've been talking about this a lot. Yeah. And honestly, this also has been a point of, I guess, tension just because I feel like the way that I've been programmed and don't often see some of the stuff that Raya's been contributing just because the way society doesn't really see it. It's kind of a deep response, but do you want to explain it from like your yeah, point of view? Yeah. I mean, a lot of household work is typically done by women in a heterosexual relationship. Mm. That's how it was seen in the culture I grew up in. I grew up in Bulgaria. A lot of that was like invisible. It wasn't really something celebrated. It was like expected for women to clean and cook and do all the laundry. And then as of more recently, also to work and make basically as much money as the man. So that's, yeah, it's just been something interesting that we've been talking about in terms of like, just, I guess, respecting and really appreciating all the energy that we pour in. I basically, I love to look at money as just one form of energy exchange and there's many other types and in a relationship, it just needs to feel balanced whatever way is done. So money, making money is obviously a great way to contribute to a family and there are plenty of other ways as well. And we, we divide those kind of by what we enjoy, I would say. Um, so I love to cook, for example. I feel that I'm more detail oriented when it comes to cleaning as well. So there are certain things that I would just prefer to do. Um, Which is yeah. like more of a traditional role. And I feel like there's something, there's almost a weird pressure from society now where it's like feminism, like women shouldn't do the cooking and cleaning. But like you said, like, but you actually really enjoy that. And yeah. I probably do adopt more of the masculine roles of like fixing things and driving and, mm -hmm. but what we noticed, right, with some of the other videos was people were commenting about how Raya wasn't driving, but they weren't really commenting about how I wasn't cooking or cleaning. Yeah. So it was almost like, I guess in the balance of trying to find equality, there's almost extra pressure on women to, like you said, kind of fulfill the traditional roles and be masculine and do all the masculine yeah, roles as that's well. That's what we only just realized the other day, like the pressure that I get, even just from viewers to, yeah. to do everything that you can do. Mm. And there hasn't been one comment asking, why Louis isn't cleaning or cooking as much, which is just, it's just fascinating. And I mean, roles are constantly changing, right? So up until, I mean, basically up until now, like we've always worked 50-50 and we bought our land 50-50, which mm -hmm. quick little interesting thing about that. When I told my Bulgarian family about that, just to show you the culture, my aunt posted on her Facebook 
like, oh, this is so exciting. My, um, like my niece just got engaged and her fiance bought them land in Costa Rica. She just assumed that, didn't ask me about it. And I messaged her, I was like, can you please take that down? Because I've been saving for years to be able to buy 50% of that land. And it just isn't even, people don't assume that yeah. that's how it is. Which is interesting. I often look back at my childhood, the content I was watching in movies and things I've shown on TV and just media in general definitely did paint a picture still of certain roles within relationships and a marriage and I think a lot of that is like kind of subconsciously taken in and I feel like conditioning that we receive and like programming you just aren't aware of it sometimes so I do think there's a an element of seeing and, and in British culture like just more submissive mm. uh, seeing female the female role women in a relationship as slightly more submissive and that the masculine role is to take charge more to decide things to um, take yeah. on certain roles and it's just a bit it's been a whole journey kind of trying to unravel how we've both grown up thinking about our roles and in society like how it all how we can do this beautiful dance together without it being like oppressive and without there being control and I don't know, it's just really yeah. complex I think. Yeah, way beyond roles and like household tasks, definitely the strong culture that I grew up in and saw around me in Bulgaria was a very dominant, possibly even controlling man and like a quiet submissive woman again in a heterosexual relationship so i guess what we're getting at is whether it's in marriage in a romantic relationship or just in friendships and kind of uh, platonic relationships with members of the opposite sex i feel like globally there's still a culture of undervaluing women undervaluing a lot of the traditional roles women play in society and things that are done. I've read an amazing book called Invisible Women just that shows the statistics of how women are oppressed still massively in society. And I think there is this idea that, oh, we've got full equality now, but I just think we want to, in our relationship, really discover how do we truly respect one another? How do I honor Raya, see the amazing things that she's um, contributing that often get overlooked and how can we like model uh, br like respect and um, really like a true equality mm. to you that are watching to our friends around us um, and just yeah navigating all of that I think it's tricky yeah and especially with this potential new life shift if we do end up getting pregnant sometime soon obviously having a baby will shift <laughs> probably everything about how we slit our chores and everything. Mm. And again, I think taking care of children is often seen as like invisible women's work. And I struggle with that myself. Even I feel guilt of like, I'm probably gonna have to take a step back from working for even just a few months, but you know, feeling like I don't wanna feel worthless. And I've, I've kind of talked about this in the video at the beginning of the year, but why is all of our worth tied to achievement that is often linked with men. So much of achievement that is to, like classically linked with women when it comes to in a family, raising kids, cleaning, mm -hmm. keeping the house. A lot of that is just seen like, yeah, obviously women do that, but this is the stuff that's really celebrated. It's mm -hmm. like more financial success and kind of work achievement. And I wanna really break that and really truly celebrate what we both put in and that will shift again through different times. There might be times when I'm making more money and you know, whatever it looks like. Um, so I think it's just, it's just about like checking in continuously and making sure that both people feel valued and feel that it, it really feels like a 50-50 energetic split with everything that gets put into keeping the family together, mm. I guess. Uh, yeah, and I've, I've noticed with some of my friends or just people I've talked to, sometimes I think the danger is there can be this weird shift where there's like, you know, a financial dependency on the man and then that can almost be abused because it's like, you know, I'm making all the money. Um, I'm not saying I am, I'm just <laughs> saying a man could be, you know, in a traditional role, I'm making all the money and you know that has that's a that's a weird power dynamic and i think that's something that we're before we get into a position where um mm. raya's going to be cha channeling a lot more of her energy into raising a child and yeah. ov obviously we want to share like child raising but i feel like obviously a woman, at least in the beginning yeah, with breastfeeding and stuff obviously yeah. <laughs> so you know it's just like you said it's like recognizing that mm -hmm. there will be a shift in dynamic but it doesn't 
need to be there doesn't need to be this weird power dynamic shift where where well, you lose your independence yeah and one is not more valuable than the other i think that's the exactly. main thing it's not mm. like oh i'm making the money and you're just sitting at home so i'll give you an allowance or whatever but i'm in charge of the money because yeah. i make it it's like well i take care of our child so mm. do you know what I mean? it's just like mm. it's all putting into the same thing we're on the same team that's the whole point we're on the same team and whether like if I'm making more money for a certain period of time or you're making more money or I'm spending more time at home cleaning or taking care of the kids or you're spending more time at home, I think that will just naturally shift and flow throughout our life and it's about respecting each other through all of the ups and downs and all the different chapters of our life. And with that, with a lot of women around the world losing financial independence because they're sitting at home taking care of the kids or whatever, I think a lot of women feel trapped in their relationship and um, can even end up in abusive relationships where they feel like they can't get out. If you see, if you saw the um, TV show Made on Netflix, like it's it's so such a beautiful show, but unfortunately such a sad depiction of the reality for so many women out there. So I think that's, it just gives us even more of a push to, not only for us to figure out like true equity in our relationship, but also just kind of showing that, I guess, and giving an example of, of true respect for yeah. each other. Um, okay, I know we kind of went on a little bit of a tangent, but we are really passionate about this and it's something we've been talking about just amongst ourselves for years, yeah. really. And I think, yeah, just like the journey we've been on, trying to figure out how to merge finances, um, trying to figure out how do we, like you said, truly be a team mm -hmm. and figure this out together and honor each other's roles and not allow the power dynamic to shift, but recognize um, the contribution and support needed and everything and I just think it's like it is a dance and I feel like um, it's constantly having to unlearn things that we've kind of grown up thinking or seeing kind of modeled to us and I just think uh, it's exciting but I do it is a challenge and just one last thing I just want to remind everyone that true equity and equality is people having the freedom to do what they want. Like I said, like people seeing that I'm doing more of the cooking and leaving comments like, oh, Raya's doing the cooking. Maybe I just love it. And maybe we can just celebrate everyone. You know, if you want to quit your job as a man and stay home as a stay at home dad, yes, like yes to all of it. Yes, stay at home moms and stay at home dads and everything in between and splitting the money 50, 50, one person making all the money, whatever it is, as long as it works, it doesn't need to make sense to anyone, but yourselves but it's all it's just all about freedom I think a lot of and I've talked to a lot of my female friends who are saying they feel that pressure that they need to like succeed in the workplace and succeed at home and it feels like this double pressure of like you can't take time off work to focus on family anymore because then you're like letting women down in a way but true truly it should be about freedom to do whatever you want at different stages yeah. of your life so anyway <laughs> Let's let's do the next question. Okay, next question. What is something that you would change about your wedding? So obviously you guys saw, if you saw our wedding, it's like a four or five part series. In so many ways, our wedding was the best week of our lives. I would have made it longer. Honestly, <laughs> I think two weeks. But obviously then it's like people don't have two weeks to come to somebody's wedding. But it was so good. Yeah. One thing I would say, and this is something I've, I don't even know if I've told you, but I've really been thinking about it a lot in like, I don't want to use regret, but I just wish that we'd done this. Basically, because it was a week long, there was so much going on that I feel like we didn't put a, a ton of time into thinking about the ceremony. A lot of the th like decisions on when we walk in and what music is playing, we literally came up with like the day of. Mm. Um, so I think I would have loved to pick a really fun song to like leave the ceremony mm. to. We kind of just played the same song, Love on Top by Beyonce, which is a great song. But I kind of, I've seen people do like some of these more like fun rom-com songs that I feel like would have literally made it feel like we were in a romantic movie. And there's just a few songs like that that I'm like, oh, I wish that we'd like come out dancing to that with everyone. So those, that's just a little thing. The one thing I would say is we still haven't been on a honeymoon and I really wish that we had. Such a mistake. We honestly just like, we're so busy planning the wedding. We had no time and honestly money to plan a honeymoon right after. But, and, our, and our parents and family were yeah. like staying on for a week after. So we were like, oh, let's just postpone. Yeah, I do. I definitely think it would have been amazing, especially after the beautiful week that our wedding was to go away and to just not have to think about anything and yeah. just like, 
relax together somewhere beautiful on a beach or something. Which so, most people do do that, so I can see. Yeah. We can just understand why now that's yeah. like a tradition, and that's a good tradition, I think. Yeah, so that definitely, if you're not sure whether or not to go on a honeymoon, I would say even just go away somewhere, even, if, you know, even if it's not expensive or your dream honeymoon, at straight least after. like just go away straight after somewhere where you don't have to think about anything, you don't have to cook, you can just like lay in a hotel bed and yeah. relax. I wish we'd done that. Yeah, but we still can. We just, it's been yeah. postponed too long. Speaking but. of, we have no idea where we should go on our honeymoon. If you have any suggestions, maybe somewhere you went on your honeymoon that you'd highly recommend, let us know. This is a really nice one. What is something you wish people knew about your partner? I would say, and so many of our friends say this too, that Louis is the most generous person a lot of us have ever met. Like he really, I mean, will like give people money or lend people huge sums of money or like let anyone borrow his camera gear and stuff comes back broken sometimes. And he's just like, it doesn't matter to him. He just would way rather like give and share than, you know, hold on to stuff and make sure that it's all okay. And that is just such a beautiful trait. And unfortunately, some people can take advantage of it, which makes me like want to protect you even more. But I just love that you don't even let that affect you you're like I don't I would rather give and sometimes be taken advantage of than not give it all so I just I love that about you and maybe it's kind of hard to see that on video I don't know oh thanks <laughs> I think for me it's your passion and I've said this like quite a few times when we get asked like what's the thing we love most about each other but I think it's Raya's like passion for things she believes in and that she will like fight so strongly and be like just so it's hard to find the right words but it's like a beautiful stubbornness that I really like love. Like I wouldn't want anyone else like fighting for me in my corner. Like you're mm. just so dedicated. And when she like believes in something, like you just you're ju you just go 100% like passionate about like fighting for that thing. Mm. And I just love that about you that you've and I think that passion is really contagious as well. Thank you. It makes me think back to our house when we lived with 15 of our friends and at the end of the house we kind of gave each other like awards like most likely to or whatever and one of the awards was like most passionate vegan and one of our roommates is has literally been working on a vegan documentary for five years so i was like surely he's gonna win he's like S like this is his whole life and i <laughs> i got that award just because i'm so like vocal like whenever i'd hear learn about a new fact or something i'd come down and tell everyone so i just always think back to that and how funny that was <laughs> What makes your relationship thrive? Spending time, like quality time together, mm -hmm. definitely helps. And especially when we like ban talking about work and YouTube, <laughs> put the phones away. We had a really nice day celebrating our seven year anniversary the other day. We just, yeah, just took the day having deep chats, walking in the countryside. That really helped me feel more connected to you. Mm. And I think we could do more of that. Obviously taking a whole day to do that is beautiful, but I think we are quite good at taking moments, even just little things of like looking at each other and saying like, can we take a few breaths together? Just like really being together. I think it's really easy in today's world to just be distracted all the time, whether it's work or your phone or other people, especially living in community, but really taking the time to like connect even just for a few moments, like looking to each other's eyes and asking how you're really feeling today. And yeah, I think all those moments really help. And then we, again, we've made videos on these before, but love languages, Enneagrams, all these different tools that we've used in our relationship to really get to know each other and to understand what makes the other person feel loved and how to really like connect with each other and empathize with each other. All of those have been huge for us in our relationship. And I feel like I've been like building blocks to get us to where we are now. And where we don't really think about it anymore. It's just kind of like part of our relationship, but it's because we did all the groundwork to understand each other that mm. we are where we are now. Yeah. Were you both on board with having children at first? And if yes, on board with the timing too. So with having children, we both talked about it like very, very early on, like within the first couple of months of meeting. And both of us said, we both know that we want kids one day. And so dating someone that doesn't want kids just it wouldn't would, make It sense. would have been a deal breaker, honestly. If yeah. one of us had been like adamantly against having children, I think it just wouldn't have worked. Yeah, so we definitely talked about it very early on, but time we did not talk about timing at all. And like I was 22 and we just met and Do you know what I just, rem I just remembered, probably even like three years into our relationship, I could not talk about marriage or kids it was like it weirdly freaked me out to the point where I was like 
we don't need to talk about this yet. Yeah, I couldn't even bring anything up about it because he was so like scared. It was more like it. I just couldn't imagine, but I feel so yeah. ready now. And what do you think that shift was? Hmm. I think um I think just giving more time to thinking about future when I was daily vlogging, I was just so in the day and so obsessed with what I was doing that I couldn't really think beyond that. And when we were traveling full time, I think we were just scared of how much our lives would change. Yeah. Which it, it would have had a huge shift. And then I guess with lockdown, we were forced to stay at home for months and we we're like, oh, okay. I think that helped a lot. I yeah. think like being based up in LA, I know mm -hmm. it didn't make for the most exciting content, but I feel like for us as a like a time in our life, like a shift, it was so vital and I, it was such an amazing chapter. And I think mm -hmm. it really pre prepared me to be like, okay, I'm ready for this next chapter of like yeah. marriage and having kids and stuff. And so many of our friends have had kids or are currently pregnant so that I think that definitely helps like mm. you don't really want to be the first one maybe in your community it might make you feel a bit left out but now I almost feel like we're left out especially being here so many of our friends in the UK have had kids or are pregnant so it's it definitely feels like okay cool you can see that they're all doing it and it makes it like more normalized and like yeah we can have one too and then we can all go for a walk with our babies i'm only just ready and i'm in my late 30s almost 40. oh yeah and that's another question people ask about our age i'm 29 and louis 39 so we're nine and a half years apart mm -hmm. um which honestly especially when it comes to things like this feels like the perfect age distance because yeah like mm. i Basically, we're ready for different life stages at the same time, even though we're nine and a half years apart. So it feels perfectly And I, aligned. I wouldn't want to leave it much later, just because I still want to have like loads of energy when we have grandkids and stuff. Like I don't want to be, I want to be around, you know. Mm -hmm. I want to be like active and around, and I think I will. I feel like yeah. we're gonna have long, long lives. Mm -hmm. But I think yeah, it's a good time. How does living in such a confined space affect your relationship? Good question. <laughs> Yeah, so obviously you know that we've been living in the school bus in the US, the van in Europe. We've been doing van life as a couple for about a year and a half now. Yeah. I guess there's a few different parts of this. Like, first, little things will likely start to annoy you about the mm -hmm. other person when you're in that close space. I'm quite messy. It's two sides. Like, you need to be aware of things that you're doing that might be annoying the other person and just be extra cautious. Mm -hmm. And also, on the other side, you also just need to learn to accept your partner and understand that obviously if you were living in the van alone maybe things would be done differently but you, you're not you're sharing it with a person so you have to like compromise on things but the biggest thing I mean obviously the number one kind of relationship advice is just communication having clear open communication so again with the van too like really communicating if you're if your partner like leaving their dirty socks on the floor every day if that's annoying you and you don't say anything and you just every day it's just like keeps adding and adding don't ever let things build up and especially if you're living in a very tight space those little things can build up quicker than usual so I was just thinking like I can get a bit defensive sometimes if someone's giving me constructive criticism but I feel like if you're constantly looking to be a better partner and maybe this is something I'd like to do more is ask hey is there anything I can do to be more supportive anything I can change just to be you know help make things work better mm -hmm. and I think when you're open and asking for some guidance then it's like a bit easier to take on like oh actually yeah like could you make sure that you know if you take mm -hmm. your dirty laundry and put it here like i just feel like that mm. could help as well if you if you do find that you're like nagging at each other like that could be a good approach well something we did when we were living with a bunch of roommates was we had one night a week that was like housemate night and there was a part of ti that time was specifically allocated to bring things up yeah like logistics and just and just like is there anything you're struggling with someone leaving dirty dishes being mm. too loud whatever like that was a specific space to do that so maybe creating something like that for your relationship especially again if you're living in a tiny space just having like one day a week or one day a month or whatever where you're like okay if there's anything that's been annoying you at all this is a very clear space where I'm ready to receive mm. any constructive feedback you have because that could be an issue and we've definitely yeah. struggled with that where in the moment if you're like hey you left your plate here hey you did this here I know that that can feel annoying and like just constant criticism but having a space however often it needs to be for you that's like hey, we're both gonna sit down and we're both gonna share if there's anything at all that has been bothering us and the other person's just gonna be like open to receive it. I think that could be like a safe space for both parties to, yeah, communicate. Living in community, do you or would you consider an open marriage? 
Okay, I want to answer this because so many people, when they think of living in community, it's they, like a hippie commune. Yeah, they're like, oh, hippie commune, everyone's dating everyone. So, this is why I wanted to answer this question because we definitely do not have an open marriage. And the community, it, that is not the vibe at all. Literally, everyone moving there, it's like couples, families with kids, with grandparents. It is not a hippie commune where everyone's like dating everyone. So, <laughs> That's why I wanted to answer this. A lot of people assume that when it comes to community living, that that's the situation. We're not gonna that get in a throuple. That's not it for us. We no. both feel- We like monogamy. Yeah, we both feel very comfortable with monogamy. Like that's what speaks to us, obviously. You do you, whatever makes you happy, go for it. But for us, it's definitely monogamy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and living in community has nothing to do with it. Well, thanks for watching the video. <laughs> Hopefully there's been a bit of insight into how we're getting on, mm. three months into marriage, answering some of your questions about what's going on. If there's anything we didn't answer that you want to ask for our next video like this, please feel free to comment below. And also if you've got any tips or mm. things that you could contribute. One of the questions I had was like basically saying like, I've been married 30 years. I think I've got more to share about marriage. And I was, so yeah, we're so open for any advice, tips. Mm. If you've been married a lot longer than us or been in a relationship a lot longer and learned some valuable lessons, we're so open for some tips. Mm -hmm. Especially maybe when you had a baby, mm. new parents, any tips at all, just in general, would be very, very appreciated. I know, yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. And if you didn't know, we have a van out here in Europe, by the way. We have some epic adventures planned coming very, very soon. So subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye. Leave a little hair right here. Perfect. <laughs>